Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together one of the smallest Ryzen 5600 GPCs that you can build at the time of making this video. Since AMD recently released the 5700G and the 5600G, a lot of motherboard manufacturers have been updating their BIOSes to support these new chips, and ASRock is no different with the Desk Mini X300. This is one of my favorite mini PC platforms, and it's actually pretty cost effective because the Desk Mini X300 can be had for around $165, and this includes a case, power supply, motherboard, and Wi-Fi in a super small form factor. And now that ASRock has updated the BIOS to support these new AMD Ryzen 5000 series APUs, I figured it was time for a build. So here's a look at the Desk Mini X300. As you can see, this thing is super small. It does come with a vase amount. And inside of here, we have our STX motherboard. It's ready to go. It uses SODEM RAM, and it does include AC, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 5.0. Along with this kit, they also include a smaller cooler, which is great for the Athlon CPUs, but when it comes to something like the 5600G, I would just opt to use the Wraith Stealth cooler that came with your CPU. This is the one that's included with the X300, and it's a bit lackluster, but it does work great for the lower-end Athlon CPUs. This also includes a 120 watt power supply, and one of the big reasons I didn't go with the 5700G in this build is because I do think it's going to be a little too much for this power supply. So the 5600G is available right now for $259, it's a great APU, 6 cores, 12 threads with built in Radeon graphics, and it does come with this Wraith Stealth cooler which will fit inside of the X300 as long as we pull the shroud off. It's going to keep that CPU nice and cool at the stock clocks, and we might even be able to get a little bit of a GPU overclock out of this thing. The X300 comes as a bare bones kit, so you will have to add your CPU, RAM, and storage. For this one here, obviously we're going with that new Ryzen 5 5600G. This platform only supports SODEM RAM, so you will have to opt to use laptop RAM in this unit, and I would suggest getting as fast as possible, which would probably be 3200 MHz. This is just some cheaper Kingston RAM here, and I'm actually able to overclock it to 3400 MHz in the BIOS. Pretty easy to do. I'll give you a look at all of my BIOS settings once we get this built, but uh, the last thing we're going to need here is some storage. This does support an NVMe SSD. I went with an Inland 1TB drive, but this does support up to two 2.5-inch SSDs around the back. Also comes with everything you need to get those connected. So if you don't want to opt for an M.2 storage drive, you can always just boot from a 2.5. So we're actually almost totally built here. The last thing I need to do is install my cooler. And this will fit inside of the case, but we need to remove the shroud. The 5600G and the 5700G do come with the Wraith Stealth, which I have here. And the shroud actually just pops off with four clips. Uh, it can be a bit of a pain. So let me go ahead and get this off real quick. And once it's off, it looks something like this, and it actually fits in this unit really, really nicely. And it'll keep that 5600G nice and cool at the stock clocks. Personally, I haven't tried any CPU overclocking with this, but I have overclocked the GPU and it works out just fine. So I've got my storage, my RAM, my CPU, and my cooler installed in the X300. All that's left to do is kind of slide it inside of the case and boot this thing up for the first time. So we've got the front power and reset button plugged right in. And in order to get this in here, you'll see that we're kind of stuck here. But if you turn this over and just kind of lift up on the top, this Wraith Stealth cooler does fit in here with that shroud removed. You don't want to force it in here. Once you pass that lip, it should slide in here nice and neat. And double check for any wires hanging out, mainly your CPU fan wiring. But uh, once it's in there, it's in there. And that CPU cooler is right there at the top of the case. It's going to pull in that nice cool air and exhaust it right out of the side over here and the rear. And with the 5600G, this Wraith Stealth cooler inside of the X300 actually does an amazing job. So let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time, and then we'll jump right into the BIOS and I'll show you what I changed. So I've just installed Windows on that NVMe SSD. There is a small blue LED indicator on the front of this case here, and I don't think you can see it in the camera, but this thing is on. We got that fan spinning, and it should boot us right into Windows. So we're all booted up. This is at the stock clocks. We're using that 5600G, 6 cores, 12 threads with those Radeon 7 graphics running it up to 1900 megahertz. But the X300 does offer some really nice little overclocking options for being such a small form factor PC. 
All right, so I want to give you a quick look at the BIOS and what I've done in here. Now, I have done a little bit of overclocking on the RAM and the GPU with this little setup. I haven't touched the CPU at all because we're already getting really close to that 120 watt power supply. You might be able to get a little more out of it, but I didn't want to push it any more than it is. And really, when it comes down to it, all I needed was a little more out of that GPU. And where that comes in, is overclocking the RAM to 3400 megahertz. Remember, it was a 3200 megahertz kit. I just went up 200 megahertz. It really depends on the RAM you use. Some of the stuff can go up to 36 and even 38, but this cheaper stuff, I really feel safe at 3400. Next up, I've taken the built-in Radeon 7 GPU from 1900 megahertz up to 2300 megahertz. And when it comes to the graphics core voltage, I went up to 1.28125. I did try this at 1.275, but I did have a couple crashes, so I had to go up just a little bit more to get it to 2300 megahertz, but it's been really stable like this. And the last thing I changed was under hardware monitor, I took the CPU fan from silent to performance mode, and it's still actually pretty quiet but this is gonna keep it nice and cool. Through all of the testing you're about to see in this video, even running Cinebench for 10 minutes, this didn't go over 81 degrees Celsius. And here it is, I'm running Windows 10 Pro. We have that Ryzen 5 5600G, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3400 megahertz. Remember we did that little bit of an overclock and the built-in Radeon 7 graphics. Let me go ahead and get this render test at 2300 megahertz from 1900 and this does make a difference so as for using this mini pc as an everyday desktop i mean you're not going to have any trouble with it this 5600g even without an overclock is great for web browsing 4k video playback photo editing and even light video editing basically anything you need to do in your everyday life with a pc can be done on this with no problems at all but one of the main things I use these mini PCs for is gaming. So we're going to get into that. But the first thing I did was run some benchmarks like always. First up, we have Geekbench 5 single core 1461 multi 6744. Actually looking pretty good here. Next up, we have Cinebench R23 with a total multi core score of 10,058. And finally, some GPU benchmarks using 3D Mark. With Night Raid, we got a total score of 15,725. Firestrike, 3,515, and finally, Time Spy with a 1,411. So these are actually not the highest scores that I've seen out of the 5600G. I've done a couple other videos on it with more aggressive overclocks, but those were much larger builds. I mean, this thing is absolutely tiny, as you saw at the beginning of this video, and we are only working with 120 watt power supply. So with all that said, so far, looking at these benchmarks, this little thing is performing excellent. But now it's time to move into some real world PC gaming. I got nine games to test, but the first one here is Genshin Impact 1080p, medium low mix. It's doing a great job. By the end of this, I actually did have an average of 60 FPS. You can lock it at 30, turn everything up to high if you want to, or if you want to get that 60 FPS out of it, medium low is really the sweet spot. And even then, when there's lots of particles on screen, you will see it dip down to around 55 every once in a while, but it's few and far in between. Moving over to Forza Horizon 4, I dropped this down to 900p, medium settings. If you want to go to low or very low, you can get over 60 at 1080p, but I wanted a little better graphical fidelity. Medium settings, 900p, we got an average of 71 FPS. When it comes to Injustice 2 on these newer Ryzen APUs, it's always struggled at higher resolutions. Most of the time I do have to bring it down to 720p and this one's no different. So we're at 720p, medium settings, but we can get a steady 60 out of it. I still personally think it looks great at 720p, medium settings, and it will run at 60 all day. Here's Fortnite in performance mode, 1080p, high. We got an average of 105 FPS. Now this will run at over 60 in DirectX 11 mode, but uh, if you want to get more out of it, performance mode with these APUs is definitely the way to go. Overwatch is just one of those really well optimized games. Here it is at 1080p, medium settings. We got an average of 67 FPS. I was hoping we could do high 1080p with this and still get over 60, but unfortunately it just seems a bit too much. Here we have Call of Duty Warzone, and with this, I'm at low settings, 1080p, but dynamic resolution scale is on, and as you can see, it is going pretty low. 
With dynamic resolution scale in this game, you can set your target FPS. I usually go to around 64, and it's staying over 60, but that resolution is dipping pretty low. Dirt 5 is just one of those games that really struggles on integrated graphics, so with this here I did have to drop it down to 720p low, and I got an average of 55 FPS. Control, 720p, low, we got an average of 44 FPS. I also tested this at 1080p, low, and we can get over 30 with it, but I was hoping we could at least get 60 at 720p, but that's not the case. And finally, we have GTA 5 1080p with a high normal mix. I got an average of 66 FPS out of this, and when it comes to these settings, Textures is set to high, basically everything else is on normal, but it is playable on this system. So one thing I always worry about with these small form factor builds is power consumption. This is total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle we average 12 watts. While gaming, we averaged 74, and the maximum that I could get this to pull with the setup I have right now was 116. Overall, I think this makes an awesome little mini PC build, especially given that we have those new 5000 series APUs available for anybody to purchase right now. You could always try this with the 5700G, and if you guys are interested in seeing a video on this same setup with that CPU, let me know in the comments below. But the problem is, we're very limited by the power supply that's included with this. At 120 watt power supply, even with that 5600G, we're almost there at the edge, and if I tried to do any more overclocking, we would definitely be over that 120 watt threshold. But with the stock clocks on the CPU, and that GPU overclocked to 2300 MHz, I think this little 5600 build turned out really, really nicely. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description. And uh, if there's anything else you want to see running on this, which I do plan on an emulation video coming up soon, so keep an eye on the channel, let me know what it is in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.